Did the thing just die? No, nothing died. I was just <laughs> hitting the record button. Welcome to Everyone Racers, and hopefully the last time I'm holding a speaker up to the microphone, because I have no ideas, and we're having a meeting later this week. I'm kidding. I'm yelling. I'm sorry. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SEC or NASA, we won't discriminate, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. And join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming to an ARO. Is, is, it, is it said that way or is it auto? Okay, we'll go to ARO episode of our podcast. ARO is a short for Auto Romania, an off-road vehicle manufacturer. Their first vehicles were produced in 1957 and the last in 2003, including the ARO 243, a three-door, excuse me, three-door, three-seater van bodied model. It's ugly. It probably <laughs> runs like a tractor because it pretty much is. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> It's episode 243. The engineers that designed the ARO 24 series are thought to have been inspired by the Fiat 1107 Nuovo Campagnola, which was in turn inspired by Willie's Jeep. It's like everybody rips off Fiats of everything. Like, you know, Yugo was a Fiat ripoff. This is a Fiat ripoff. Lada was a Fiat ripoff. I think it's just the Italians were the only ones that would do business with any Soviet bloc. Possible. I don't know. There's a lot of those Chinese people, you know, like well, this is a off American ago. stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, if you're uh, not rolling in your Romanian copy of an Italian copy to an American off-road vehicle, then hey, get your bingo card out. We've already got a couple of things going on today. Jeff had technical problems. So there that's got to be on there somewhere. And Wakeman problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no Wakeman problems. Oh, no. It's technical. No. I'm sorry. No, which the could, could be classified as Wakeman problems. Before. Yeah you have logged on to this oh, but a good bit of that was like mental and i talking about how many downloads here and what platforms there and uh -huh. so. okay let's move on because we're so doing this work. all for the likes <laughs> we don't usually yell what you're working on what you're working on mental i did i Boom. did that's how she signals it's time to move on Thank and you. i have been working on fence building uh oh. as i talked about before we had our fence and i redesigned our gate which kind of took some i had to solve a few problems now but now i've got a new gate up there um with the promise of a new three pedal mafia race car i am very excited about i have uh reinvigorated my aerobic fitness program so i'm back to running three days a week and bicycling two days a week and not walking without pain the rest of the time i am so hurting right now <laughs> Before the show, Chris was remarking at the size of my hair because I went for a run during lunch and uh, after I showered, I didn't have any conditioner. So I am very much Ronald McDonald this one. I didn't I use am... any conditioner today either. No. See, like... and it shows. <laughs> it totally shows. A lot of volume head, there, Jeff. Right? Your head's not shiny <laughs> enough. It's definitely pretty shiny. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. pretty shiny, actually. Yeah. Uh, and tomorrow I will go be picking up Tyler Stank's new excursion that he is purchasing from a local dealership here. Did so, you oh. manage to uh, foist off your trailer on him or is he smart enough to not take that? <laughs> no, and yes, he's smart enough not oh, to yeah. take it. I figured that. He knows better uh, than that. He doesn't want yes. to be in possession of stolen property. <laughs> so. I already said, once it moves like two or three states, it, it's no longer stolen. It's yeah. just Seriously, how long did I drive around with expired New York plates on That's a true. questionable trailer? Well, at least with? you knew who it came from. Sort of. So, who well, knew where, well, I knew who where knew it came where from. Came who from. knew where it recently. came from. Who thinks he knew where it came from yeah that's what yeah. i'm saying but also you know the the advantage of the the janky ass half magic trailer is no law enforcement officer would be like that trailer is stolen i'm going to go stop he'd be like i'm not stopping that idiot i'm gonna end up with needing a tiny shot finally also uh youtubing i have been partnering with a las vegas local we are going to be making some f1 related content look for that very soon on the e1r youtube channel Oh yeah. Cool. Very excited. If, but not all of our listeners like F1. 
They don't have to listen to it. And it will be Just clearly labeled. This is F1 crap. Uh, it's also going to be Las Vegas related stuff. And uh, there, you know, there might be some nerd nerd in there. So, you know, Aaron can just get over it and listen to the first 10 minutes. If he doesn't like it, he can punch out. Yeah. I wasn't aiming anybody. I'm just, Oh, I was just now. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know that. Yes. <laughs> Chrissy, take right. it. What I doing? didn't do, didn't do much interesting stuff. We went to the Cape this weekend, uh, did a lot of cleaning and fixing things, which is all good. And back to work. Uh, you guys did much more interesting things. Jeff, what are you working on? Uh, well, I for, didn't actually write this down, but I fixed my refrigerator by moving some parts. I had a, a, a busted uh, uh, ice maker and I needed to install a new valve like combo thing that was kind of fun. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is work has begun ripping all of the needed parts out of our crashed LS swapped 300 ZX, the Z, whatever it is. The fire system, the radio, the seat, the harness, a bunch of other little stuff was yanked as we assessed what will go on and what won't go on the new RX-7 uh, 3 p.m. race car. Uh, there's some serious parts ordering and lots of discussion because there's a weekend of fun coming up at the CNC Mayhem Factory because it's work weekend time. We got to get a few of the heavy bits done uh including saving our lives i think that's that's on the list right i mean that's that's the must that's do the list part the of must the list do's are the part that like yeah you're not gonna die in the crash and you're not gonna burn and you're gonna pass tech yeah the rest is water under the bridge they can probably done at my house and so, actually yeah. in that order yeah 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 pretty much well one and two leads to three yeah <laughs> So my wife has basically given me the, and how long is that going to stay here <laughs> at the 300 Z? So the ripping will continue all summer long, whether we're ready or not. Things like the transmission and the pedal and all the other good bits will be taken off of it. Yep. Yes, mental side question. So CNC have had very successful work weekends. Perhaps we could schedule a deconstruction weekend where we all show up at your house with sawzalls and reduce the Z to something that will fit in a trash can. No, I think no, no, no way. It has a title, has a roll cage. Yeah, it goes, it goes away as a complete parts car. Oh it's yeah, yeah. There's enough good. We, there's enough good left on it. We just need to take. There's a lot the of parts we, we need off of it first. Yeah, that it has a. Key. It has a VIN, it is not a title, and it is not on fire. So, therefore, it goes away whole, save the time. Someone oh, yeah. else we might don't want need to someone, cut it up. Someone might want the cage. I mean, the, the left that is side a great is all, cage. The left is side a is all cage. still good. The left side suspension is also good. The rear diff is good, et cetera. All right. So, uh, then I stand corrected. And if you are in need of 300 Z Z34 parts, 32. Get hold of it. Z32. Right. Damn it. 32, 34 is pop up. Damn it. All right. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? Cool. Uh, brought the CRV up to the Cape, unpacked, uh, cleaned a bunch of things, fixed a bunch of things, cleaned more things. Yep. Um, work, <laughs> stupid work. I had to go to Baltimore for Sunday night to be there Monday morning for a new hire. Anyway, uh, Civic got all the gauges in finally. So all gauges in, all gauges wired lights all working everything verified done in looks nice i'm happy with it satisfied it's even on a quick release wiring plug um got the coolant burped and verified that the leak at the heater core was fixed which is excellent found and fixed a loose connection problem in the wiring stuff by the driver's foot mounts it up you know to started to clean up the wiring but that's really all i have left to do and to make the car drivable is wrap up the what's left of the wiring into looms in the car alignment and uh, harness eyes to mount belts to be able to drive it. And then it's done except for safety stuff, basically. But safety Next stuff work, yeah. is a lot. Next work weekend, cage building. Yeah. It was cage, fire system, cool box, stuff like that. Yeah. Which is yep. interesting, all the stuff we're going to be working on this weekend, but not build. Other car. Yes. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying tweaking. to get this car. Everything this car. Tweaking. Right, mobile, and then I can actually get it registered and start driving in the street a little bit just to sort it out um, because I got to get other stuff on the project front burner. Got to get the boat and the Corvette up on the front burner. So, and the house. Nice. 
Yep. All cool. right. Chris, are you going to yell or should I yell? The it's it's really you Chrissy. You should yell. Oh, okay. Oh, it's Chrissy. It's our brand. It really Nothing. should be Chrissy. Yes, and no! Uh, so everybody has sent this to me. I'm very excited. I saw it everywhere. The Scout is coming back. Yes, the International Scout as an EV built by Volkswagen. Yes, you heard that correctly. Recently tweeted by Volkswagen and covered by everyone and their brother and then emailed and texted me and said to me on Facebook, uh, I'm already ready to get on the list. This is very exciting. In case you didn't know, International Harvester sold the Proto SUV Scout from 1961 to 1980. My first car and first love was a 1973 Scout Two, that is the second version, second generation version. Uh, anyway, the truck maker went belly up in 1985 after 80 years in production and became part of the Navistar brand, which produced motors and heavy trucks, including the well-loved 7.3 liter turbo diesel found in all the very cool Ford trucks and schoolie van conversions with dirty hippies in them. Um, but Volkswagen acquired what was left of International in 2020 with its purchase of Navistar International Group. So they own all of Navistar now. Hence the names, the intellectual property, the visuals, and all the logos now belong to the Volkswagen Auto Group. Our favorite and abbreviation. Our favorite abbre abbreviation. Uh, is someone going to share that or should I? Go for it. You share it because I, I, I had this image of a Volkswagen boardroom, all these very thin, well-dressed, uh, perfectly groomed executives going, what's, what's now it's us a business? How can we make Jeff buy a new vehicle? Oot, they're oot, they're oot. not wrong. Gunta, Gunta, I know. Hold on, I had to open it here. Oh, here gosh. Comes, here comes, here comes. <laughs> well, I, I'll need to share again later, so. This is Coming around again on the guitar here. here it wait is. for it. <laughs> <laughs> You got to wait for the kids to be here when it comes. Worst okay. Okay. So here ever. it is. Here is the Volkswagen auto groups tweet. This is for you USA a, a lightning bolt. We will produce an all electric pickup rugged XUV lightning bolt. The strong iconic brand hashtag scout gets electrified. But the most important part is look at these fake ass renderings here. Look at the shape of that rear window. Yeah. Right. If the rear window looks like that, I'm totally buying it. Because those of you who know what a Scout 2 looks like, that was the signature. This actually just looks like a car that I would draw. And I'm a really bad drawer. It's a box. It's a box. It's and a box and box a little box and, and oh, circle you, wheels. I am you like, guys do not understand the nuance of that design. And everything, I not, not only is Jeff right, but I, I predict Sajeev don't. will write a, a, a Venom column where he goes through and talks about design and highlight that. But I, I, I'd have to ask, so Jeff, you're not going to get the pickup because if to get this, you've got to get rid of the lesbian Lori. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what it, Halls, obviously, yeah. or you should just not buy it first so they, and buy that, it used. That C pillar sweep, like I'm trying to compare it to the BMW, the Hoffmeister Kink, as it's known. They have a similar kind of C pillar the sweep. Hoffmeister this, Kink. It's true. Mm -hmm. This one we're going to call the Corn Binder Kink. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. All right, we're going to copyright that. I want a quarter of time somebody says it. That's brilliant. Uh, we're moving on. Oh, those wacky F1 drivers. I love talking about F1. For safety reasons, the FIA has been tightening up their enforcement, mostly along the realms of fireproof or at least <coughs> cotton undies. Philip Norton at Auto Week writes about the other concern, jewelry. The obvious safety issues are the transferring heat in a fire, getting hung up in the cockpit for an egress, or in the case of a wedding ring, your hand swelling after an accident. But F1 drivers are also celebrities, and we know that makes them better than everybody else else. So they have started asking for exemptions. Gastly wants to keep his cross for religious purposes while Magazine voice his desire to take off his uh, to, his, to his take personally responsibility for his wedding ring. Uh, they made me take off my wedding ring. The wedding ring, if something bad was going to happen, I would want my wedding ring uh, as a kid. I feel it feels bad. To take it off sometime. Something like that. If your wedding ring there must be somehow the, the let us take the responsibility and take it away from the FIA. A waiver would be great. Hamilton was given a waiver for something, something like four and, races or something. Yeah. Uh, and he couldn't remove it. And during the press conference, he got the exemption for all he could sporting a lot of jewelry uh, and three watches. I got an exemption here. I'll get the exemption for the rest of the year. Okay. 
Uh, who wears, this is, I guess, the poll for us, who wears a wedding ring in the car, race car or other jewelry? Me. Me. You don't I, wear it, to, like, on the weekend, though, Chris. So there's that. My wife bought me a rubber wedding ring that I literally, as I go to catch my flight, I take off and put on the rubber one. And just one of the hassles of that, if you get into a situation where your hand is swelling, they end up having to cut the ring. And if you have a titanium or a very hard metal ring, something like gold is very soft, um, they're going to have to cut your finger off. Yep. There's my titanium ring. Mine's and I don't Amazon. always wear it. I usually, a lot of times I clip it on my key ring, but sometimes I get in with car without it, with it on. Mine's carbon fiber. And you don't usually wear it. I don't know if it'll cut. No, I don't. Because I have to take it off when I'm working on stuff and it gets all gross. And I'm not taking gloves off sometimes. Like I worry it's going to pop off. And uh, yep. Yeah. That's why why I have the the cheap rubber band you can buy. Everyone knows I'm married. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. So now, if you haven't seen the latest Lemons Wrap Up video, you should, because apparently we get some shout outs for the Pot Club where Chrissy almost murdered three people. Um, so, <laughs> I did not. Yeah. No I'm worries. I'm mad, but we'll, we'll watch that this weekend. <laughs> anyway, speaking of attempted murder, normally we don't cover this kind of negative stuff, but it's pretty funny. Uh, Nico DeMattia at the drive shared a tale of what others may have called doing it wrong. A Washington State trooper stopped a U Haul box truck along a state highway. This is normally normal, but hey, the, the, what's in the box truck, that's what made it interesting. In the back of the smallest size U-Haul box van was an Isuzu Rodeo. This is not a Honda Passport, as they said in the drive. No, the reason you could tell is the Isuzu Rodeo has a black C-pillar trim. The Passport had a body color one. So wrong. Sorry about your luck there, guys. Yeah. Anyway, um, our YouTube videos can see the picture, but for those listening, understand that the rodeo is barely off the ground. The rear wheels are halfway climbing up the step bumper. That's it. Uh, and there, this is the best part. This is held into the box truck by one ratchet strap that goes presumably from the trailer hitch of the box truck around the rear bumper, rear glass and tailgate of the rodeo up somewhere onto the roof. Yeah, I have no idea truck. what it's connected to on the Where roof. Is, what is what the I tie down know. on the roof? Exactly. Is it like the lip at the top? Who knows? But you know, congratulations, U-Haul, for making your boxes sturdy. Like that is, <laughs> That's one sturdy box. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's impressive. Chris They're just trying to, boxes. apparently this, it's a, the rodeos weigh 3,600 pounds. The load in the truck limit. 2,800 pounds, but it tows 6,000. So they just didn't want to pay for the dolly rental. So uh, where's Why the video of uh-huh. Where's the video of them putting this in low That's range exactly and climbing it up in the I box? Want. Oh, this is silly nannies loading their truck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, we found out where they went. Washington <laughs> State. Oh, a... it's here. <laughs> That's <what> they're doing. <laughs> oh, okay. Boy. Jeff. I'm loading things. All right, so uh, just saying the word scout had me uh, interested in shopping and dreaming about getting a new one. So I, uh, of course, went to racingjunk.com because, you know. Best place to daydream. Best place to daydream, yeah. It's kind of funny because I really didn't expect to see a lot in there because it's, you know, a racing kind of themed things. And, you know, old trucks are not exactly racy. But I found three good ones. I am opening them up now so I can share them. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that my first car was a 73 Scout. I think I might have mentioned that already. Yeah, you just said that. Well, I'm I'm say I'm re-saying the year because here is the Scout pickup, also known as the Scout Terra. And this is um oops. Looks like orange a Scout and white, with which just was a, the color like of mine. Little yeah, Scout two. thing. Yep, yep, like little, they did little with the Broncos. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, this one is my damn Zoom links are in the way. I can't actually get back to the ad itself. There we go. <laughs> Automate. There we go. This one is offered for only $56,995. Oh. How much did you sell yours for? Oh, uh, $3. My, my mother sent it to the junkyard. <laughs> Without asking me, 
because it had been in her yard for three years or no i was awake <laughs> i was away at grad school uh, but if you see here chrissy here is the lovely shape of the window got it got that it is okay the corn what do, what do you call it chris the corn you're on mute actually so there's that sorry because i was drinking water and i was told Thank i can't you. do that Thank so uh, you. It's, the, it's the corn binder kink Corn, corn binder, binder kink. kink. So there's the corn binder kink right there for all of you uh, uh, kinky corn binder people. Um, uh, this one is original motor. Look, look at that Spartan interior. Again, this one's a bargain. $54,995. Oh, it's okay. What I really want is a 73. And Racing Junk has the ability. I have to stop share because if I just change windows, you won't see it has the ability to give me exactly what I need at a price I can afford. Oh no. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Here it okay. is. Oh. Now, what about 1973 International Scout Barn Find. It That's is the a total free description, ad. by the way. That's yeah, that, is, that is the entire description. <laughs> uh, thank you, Fat Jackie, listed by Fat Jackie. I, I scroll back down because we were just talking about how to properly secure a vehicle. And that's not it. That's no. not, yeah. Ratchet <laughs> straps around a bumper. Those aren't ratchet. But, those are like no, those motorcycle are, tie downs. Like so, yeah, those are the, the ones you get four for $10 at Harper Freight. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holding a scout. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Problem it's not with that, that at all. Uh, nope. <laughs> uh this is and what about the, the same and they're same angle they're angled in the same yeah. direction and what about the international that you have in your driveway right now that you oh, almost uh, got running definitely doing that one okay we'll do that one first this one is in kemp texas so texas so people close. if you're interested go get it but anyway, I just thought that was fun because we always talk about racingjunk.com as the greatest place to go find racing cars and racing parts. And there were a ton of trucks on it, a ton of classics, a ton of uh, square body Chevy stuff. So I was pretty excited to see it. Go to racingjunk.com, do a little dreaming, subscribe to their newsletter. Tell them you heard about the about them on the E1R podcast. Plan. Plan. Oh, I'm sorry. We got a car uh there. Upcoming races. Hey folks, champ cars rolling into Oklahoma at Hallett. 29 cars, only three are BMWs. Oh, interesting. That's good. Yay. Wow. 13 of them are Miatas. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are no Hondas, three Porsches, and not really interesting cars, but Battle Scarred Motorsports is bringing two of their Crown Vicks. And they're, they're interesting in and of themselves and we're big fans of theirs. So good luck to those guys. And they're going to good. Uh, we're actually hoping to have uh, Scott, who is the manager of Hallett via our contacts with racing junk. So Scott, if you're listening, we love your track, please come on our show. We'd love to talk about everything going on because they finally built a tunnel. So now they don't have to red flag the race every time somebody needs to get out of oh, the good. infield. Mm. Like Excellent. kind of unsustainable. I didn't know that. Yeah. Recent results. Oh, excuse me. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Puberty, honey. Yeah. Can, can yeah. Ever come out to play? <laughs> <laughs> AER, because that's what happens when I scream a lot, right? AER, all right, all right. I'll keep at, screaming. At the Glen Sunday, saw Sunday, Saturday, saw Team Sailing two laps over Raver motorsports who just finished a second over a second ahead of 944 banger sunday was a saline's day they took first one and two a lap apart and one more lap back was raven motorsports gabrielle was at road america saturday had automatic racing two and a half minutes over thunder bunny acp tangerine associates was two laps back sunday jtr motorsports ran away with first but second was stratus 59 this is second ahead of thunder bunny racing I really hope Stratus 59 has a Dodge Stratus. They probably don't, though. Probably don't. <laughs> it's really, at least Same. those te team names were semi Thunder Bunny is fun. It's yeah. it's completely possible, though, because uh, when I ran uh, the Ozarks, or the, the Allen, the driver I kept referring to, uh, is a Stratus guy because they're basically Mitsubishis, and he has found a way to make Stratuses very, very fast, and he's a hell of a wheel man. So... And they're they're from that area. He lives in North Carolina now, but it's completely possible that uh, it might have been actually driving a Dodge Stratus. Uh, that, would that would be, be fantastic. Cool. I hope so. Yeah. 
Oh, listener feedback time. Now, on our Facebooks, our playlist episode generated some comments because the uh, YouTube version got shut off. We have a workaround. And if you actually want to watch that episode, get a hold of us or check out our post because basically we created a fake email account and we gave you the password. So you can log in and watch it privately. Um, but Facebook, that's where the people left the comments. Crash Heroes commented, Bill is unwilling to admit how long it took for you guys to hit the song he knew. I'm guessing Judas <laughs> Priest. <laughs> I, I, I think he's probably a Judas Priest guy. Yeah, definitely. I, but I'm sure he's heard um, Downtown because there's all oh. kinds of songs. He's heard all the party songs because in the next garage to us, but he just doesn't know what they are. Oh, I suppose. Okay. Well, he's usually in bed pretty early too. So he probably doesn't get to the real party songs. Yeah. Uh, grumpy old man Jeff W said silence is my playlist before returning to his front lawn. But do you know what this is? No, that's not me. Yeah, that's that's no. It's a different Jeff W. He said silence is my no, playlist. This is Jeff W of of um uh Def Jeff. This is Def Jeff. Oh, this is Def Jeff. Who is Def? Oh, huh. and Jeff oh, no, oh I cannot believe I did not <laughs> make that connection. Funnier. I just thought I he saw, was a grumpy old I man. I saw that. No, he said silence oh, is my playlist, and I thought yes. it was hilarious because silence is his playlist. Say yeah. silence because he's playlist. he's Def he's Def he's Stig Def. on Instagram. He's Def. Wow, Jeff. I have to go edit some stuff on Facebook because I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay he, he's I, a fun guy he actually yes he's probably he's laughing his guy. ass off like that idiot didn't even realize yeah. it uh. yeah pretty much <laughs> who do deaf jeff listen to the podcast how does he no he probably liked it on he probably likes us on facebook so he probably does podcast on, on the youtube if you're listening deaf jeff which again if you didn't figure this out how <laughs> you're listening the next time Captions. i see you I will tell you that the captions on YouTube are very good. I always check them. Good. Well, maybe, Nine, maybe he's watching it that way. Yeah. But no, no, because the, 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 out the episode music got song. pulled. No, no yeah. I know that. All right, DJ914, our good buddy, said, Eric said, given that I am the de facto DJ for most of the three Pedal Mafia events, what I play has generally changed over the years based on what I find people like and the new stuff that I find. I've heavily been influenced by Sorry for Party Raising and thank them for introducing me to the douche, douche, douche <laughs> music. He said douche once. I just wanted to make it sound good. While I never listened to it myself, it has become a solid staple of the 3 p.m. paddock. Very true. Metzo posted a picture of the flat tire on his CLS. And, D and then had... didn't mention it in What Are You Working On, which I expected it to be. I wasn't working on it. I took it to my favorite tire guy. <laughs> So yep. uh, Glenn F pointed out that Vegas has an amazing number of small tire shops selling new and used tires and willing to do almost anything. They are open at crazy hours too. had a flat in a rental car and had choices of places to go at 9 PM, which I have said repeatedly. And it is, I don't know if it's racist or not. I don't mean for it to be racist, but up to the point now where if the person doing my tire does not speak with an accent, I don't know how much I trust them. Mm -hmm. I always feel bad for this guy. He knows me. Uh, he knows the CLS. So, and every time I get a screw in a tire or even when I just needed to swap the tires over, this is where I go. And I know he is fighting these low profile nine and a half inch tires, 30 series tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I always pay his fee. And then while he's doing it, I go next door to the seven 11. And uh, if it's cold, I get him a cup of coffee or I get him a Coke. And uh, it, this time was no exception. It was actually a little hot. So, I said, hey, man, you want a Coke? And he's like, yeah, Coke, Coca. Yeah, bueno. And then I brought him a Gatorade, too, because it was a hot day. So I, I came back over there. And, but yes, this is it's one of the weirdest things that I just love about this city is you can get any tire fixed at almost any time. Metal, you've been married how long to Vicky? 20 years. And her first language is? English. English. Uh, her, they did. They no... did not. That they. Uh, her parents refused to speak Spanish in front of the children. Ah. They all had to learn Spanish as uh, grown ups. I was going to say, how do you not Mexican know at least American? Go <laughs> to night school and take Spanish <laughs> and get, and get a B. B. I, 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 and hey, may, maybe that is. I made an assumption, and maybe I assume it was your uh, in laws it, it, spoke Spanish. Yeah. Up, you... up next on everyone social history. Yeah, uh, but at the time, living in the Midwest, it was was not looked favorably yes. upon to be bilingual and uh you know her father an army veteran you know always told him 
hey, be very proud of who you are and where you came from, but you're an American, be an American. So uh, all of the kids had to learn it uh, after. And so now the, the second generation, uh, most of the uh, nephews and nieces all speak Spanish. And I can they under- took it to community college and got a B. You got it. Uh, I can understand it, but I can't. If I try to speak it, they all just start laughing at me. Uh, I got you. Good. I can order drinks. <laughs> Say hello. Do, Thank does, you. Does I'm, uh, I'm sorry. It's my, wife. it's my lo wife's siento. job. Muy lo siento. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, we were excited to show off the, the new race car on Insta, and there were a few ideas out there. Midwest ad 79 said, I mean, sure looks good now. Just wait till the hammer comes out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Auto X Mike, Mile, sorry, said, it's an ITS prepared RX7. Must be properly quick. Well, we'll see about that. No, it's no. gonna be slower than the other cars I that are team. I, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's gonna be B pace at best. Yeah, it's gonna but be it is between the, the Mazda three and the RX seven. Let's see which, which uh, one's got it. You want to talk about it? I mean, Miata is a momentum cars, but there is no torque on a road rate. It is the momentumist of momentum cars. Uh, see? Let's mention real quick. Sorry, Chrissy, I didn't mean to jump into your thing here, but um I, I think that many people think that lemons is slow who are not running lemons and they need to get back to a race because comparatively, I think it's going to be a dog of the field. I don't care that it's FTS prepared. Yeah. Okay. 11% racing said y'all should make a hydrate, urinate, dominate shirt. It was an epic Chris, uh, Chris quote. Yep. He's not wrong. Thanks. All right, sim racing. You and our race this no, it was prep for this Sunday's Lemons race. So they're having one and we knew what it was. So first race we went to Lime Rock with the usual Enduro cars. I'm not gonna mention the A class cars, just because we're only gonna talk about the B class cars, and the winner of the B class cars was Tyler. So great job, Tyler. <clears throat> Second race was wings and things. So it's every like a varying car with was wings everything from the amg w12 which is last year's dominant car <laughs> to skip barbers all on the same track at the same time i couldn't tell what cars people had because in the little picture dave sends me of the results i can't tell the difference between all of the wings and things various cars that were there um but dave won in some winged thing so great job, Dave. The silver crown. The silver crown is the silver. No, that's not. Wing. That's not. Oh, that's not a wing wings. thing. That's there's, there's no wings on the silver. Oh, there's crown. no that's wings a, on the silver crown. You're right. No. So this is like the Delara IR01 and the uh, and the know, Skippy and the Skippy and another Delara and the Formula One car and stuff like that. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Formula Three and two. Anyway, all those are available at Coda. That's that's hey. this weekend's lemons race. Uh, you, you know who has lots of wings on her car? <laughs> it's not true. Chrissy's mom has always wants to add a wing to her car. Yep. It's still not true. But hi, Chrissy's mom. <laughs> I'm I'm going to add a wing to her car. I'm just going to buy one of those things on Amazon and show up, and she's going to roll. She's going to roll up to uh with the uh the the five with like a giant wing on the hatch. It won't fit in the garage then. That'll be a problem. <laughs> No, if you can fit Snowflake in the garage, you can fit the five with a wing. That's true. Yes. If you can park a Suburban, you can park a winged Mazda. If Thanks. you can dodge a wrench, you can... Never mind. Main topic time! Does anyone want to enter this, or should I? It's story time again. It. Okay, yeah. No, no, more mental. Time. Go for it. Go All for right. it. It's story time, folks. And we... we a few weeks ago, we talked about our favorite moments on track, those ones that inspire us. And we need those moments to get us through these moments that we're going to talk about right now. You know, that time you really didn't drive well, or maybe you put your nose into someplace you shouldn't and bent up the race car. The time the car let you down. The time that the off-track problems suddenly made themselves on-track problems. Uh, that, that time you completely lost the race or lost your shit in a paddock. This isn't for making fun of us, but you are welcome to do so. But it is also what we learned in these negative situations. It's great. Yeah. Learn from our mistakes, folks. We've made lots. So should <laughs> we uh, round robin this? Everybody tell a story and then we'll come yeah. back and see who's got a second story. 
Sounds good. All right. Who wants to go first? Will we go first? Sure. You're sure. eager. Go for it. You're that excited. I Let's am. Hear it. I am eager because I, I think when I was thinking back, a lot of my stories had a theme and it was about when I didn't feel right in the car. And I don't mean like my driving was bad. Like that's something I can fix. It's when something was happening that made it impossible for me to really stay on task and keep driving. The first ones, uh, like a consistent, not a, I want to say a consistent problem, but something that I had frequently. So it's not like it happened one time, but uh, earlier in our racing, when my level of fitness wasn't as good as it is today, and I didn't pay attention to my body's needs as well. And I would get really nasty leg cramps during shifts, sometimes in the beginning, sometimes in the end. And it was painful. Um, yeah, so we're talking like boat years is when it would happen a lot in the older Civic. And I, I think it had something to do with like the way the seat was because the seat was very uncomfortable and where like you didn't like you didn't really have the ability to brace yourself on a dead pedal. That's why dead pedals are important. So like the the use of the right leg, the throttle leg would just be very important. And then all of a sudden in the middle of a shift, inside of my thigh would start cramping like you wouldn't believe and it hurt a lot and it would break my concentration and it would make it driving difficult and i would like try and like rub my leg to try and stop from cramping and just you know like it would just tie itself in a knot and you know once it happened once in a weekend like it was vi it was liable to come back like there was no amount of hydrating i could do the second day to you make need it enough bananas back. I needed bananas. Exactly. Need My bananas. Let me bring bananas. Um, it's been a while since this happened. It hasn't really been a thing lately. Um, I'm hydrating better. I'm doing like really good stretching. Like, but I used to like literally get in the hot tub and be like, ah, I can't move my leg. And it was terrible. And it sucked. Matt, so you got a question before I give my advice on this one? No. Finish your point. Okay. Uh, Sorry. so drink lots of water people. I have a strict stretching routine that I use every time I work out and before I get in the car and I think it has fit, you know, I, but hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. That's the key because I'm pretty sure it was lack of hydration and lack of driver comfort because the boat was not a comfortable seat. And I think that was causing part of the problem. And Chris, I'm glad you're back to hear this, not having a dead pedal because I think I was using my leg to brace myself. I have a dead pedal for the new Civic sitting on the workbench waiting till the interior is painted Makes that sense. I took out of a junkyard car just to satisfy y'all. Thank you. Matt's not a question. I'm sorry. Man. Well, um, I, I think a lot of this, like uh, we dabbled in fitness, but I think one of our big kind of pushes was when we case swapped the Godzilla and we we're like, oh, crap this this car is fast we should probably you know like we actually started maybe i shouldn't have this next beer because i'm taking the first shift tomorrow and and maybe i should eat a little healthier and and because we were strapping ourselves into a very fast car and three of us on the screen started paying attention to our fitness at that point of you know i mean was was that your your turning point or you just got tired of because I, I i think that was a big one for me and it's not like i was out of shape but it's like the first time i took that civic down the straight at new jersey i'm like i we i i can't get into You're this car close half to 130 yeah, yeah, I, yeah i can't yeah, get yeah. into this car half assed anymore i mean this is you, you, you better it definitely too. was taking the driving more seriously because we started getting better and better like it, it, it was, it was less of a joke and that made me get more serious and made me start thinking about things. I mean, I remember like pouring out the moonshine saying, look, I'm making the race team faster and <laughs> us having some yeah. serious conversations about like, so what are we doing here? Everyone, are we partying with a little racing on the side? Are we racing with a little partying on the side? And I was not an, I was not drinking much. I never was really, I mean, sometimes I do, but like, I am not the heavy alcohol guy. I was not getting drunk. I don't think I was dehydrating because of lack of 
because oh, no, but alcohol. like it, it's, it's the same thing. You weren't you wasn't weren't paying thinking, attention. Right. You know, like, yeah. no, you you'd have like a beer or something, but you drink three purple drinks and then, you know, Stop eat nothing but Wawa <laughs> you know, on the way there. <laughs> get get an hour's worth, get an hour's worth of sleep and wake up the next day and, you know, crack I, open another purple drink. I, honestly, I would just I would wrench and not even think about making sure to stay hydrated. Like, cause that's what I was doing. I was wrenching all night. I wasn't drinking all night. Yeah. So. A purple drink, by the way, is it's, it's just basically caffeine and Mountain Dew. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Love my purple drink. <laughs> purple. Chris drink. is. It's an A in there. Hydrate, <laughs> urinate, dominate. I'm caffeinate, urinate, dominate. And he doesn't anyway. specify what he hydrates with. If it's a liquid True. and it's alcohol. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but depends. there it is. That that that, that car. some yeah. of my worst shifts were me driving with one hand and one hand on my leg, trying to get my leg to function again, and it was terrible. And I am knock on wood, I don't want to go back there, and I'm doing everything I can to make sure I don't. It's so crazy because that takes so much thought away from all the other thought that you're supposed to be doing when you're racing. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. get into flow state when you're disturbed. You can't even drive a car like with thinking about how bad your leg hurts. And mm-hmm. they hurt so much. I, I completely, I get them. I under, completely understand. They're awful. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Who else got a story? Round Robin. Chrissy, do you want to go? So I'm, you're like next on my screen. Sure. Clock, yes. Uh, so I happen to, I have listed on here the years that I've lost in the paddock. Uh, I lost a lot in the paddock because I, for a long time, was um, making sure that I was a drinking team with racing happening. So uh, I finally got, I probably when we started going fast and I said, all right, well, maybe I should probably not um, drink so much, especially uh, when I start on Saturdays, I, ba- I barely drink anything on Friday nights. So um, so yeah, so I turned around, realized it, but there are plenty of times where I was not so sober at all. And that did not help me on track at all. So do, do you remember like being affected for your driving or like, yeah, cause oh, you've yeah. never missed, you've never missed a shift. I don't think we've had other people literally oh, like no. pass out in the RV and be like, no, I'm not driving today. No, After making usually... breakfast usually, but yeah. Yeah, I I know I've gotten in and I've been like I'm not really sure I'm totally sober. Uh so I'm or not you're going dusty. Dusty uh, the next morning. Yeah. I'm like I'm not going very fast. Uh yeah, just not really yeah. having I'm like you can I have to psych myself up. You can do it. You're supposed to be racing and you're like um but I really shouldn't have. And some of that truthfully is going to bed too late. So we and then when I get to bed I don't sleep so well because I sleep on a half couch listening it's to an somebody RV. dying There's next a to me. Snoring asshole ne- like <laughs> right? 2 feet away. No, then not snoring all the way. It, you're dying too. Yes. So there's that. So um I just don't sleep well and then when we go to bed at 3 a.m. and then I get up at 7 I'm just you know like that's part of the am I hung over or am I really just feeling terrible because I race weekend? Yeah, lack of headphones, sleep Chrissy. Is- Bring, that's the secret. That's the secret to the Wakeman's RV. Bring headphones. Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I wear earplugs. He wears it, earplugs. It, when, when, it doesn't really matter when, when you... Uh, lack of sleep is a, is a real thing because I would stay up late, late, late wrenching yeah. on other people's cars. Yep. Like not even ours. And I don't do that anymore. Either. Or sometimes I mean, I you just stand, people, stand around look, laugh at the drunk people. Like... Yeah. It, sometimes you just stay up late and you're like, oh, oh it's I, we're going to bed. Okay, it's midnight. Okay, at one o'clock. cold, 80% party. <laughs> That's yeah, what exactly. happens, right? <laughs> and then you go to bed and you miss stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm just, I'll, I'll stop there. I think it's fantastic. I, I totally get it. Yep. That's why uh, we come home. If we go clockwise, numbers. Chris, you're up. All right. This is recent. I, I historically am a very clean driver. I don't hit anything. I don't put a wheel off. I don't pass under yellow. I don't do any of that. I think my total lifetime black flags is could be counted on two hands. So that's it. Except last race at Pitt, I had two flags in one shift. And I don't know what was wrong with me. I was felt fine. It was the afternoon. There was no problems. And 
I have two wheels off and I passed under yellow. I couldn't believe it. This doesn't happen to me. I'm very upset. This is more flags than I've had in entire seasons within one shift. Yes, Metzl. Didn't you get two at New Hampshire? No, it was one. Oh, okay. All right. But it was my fault because I just, I drove off once and everyone was so upset that I did that because I, yeah, I, but that was New funny. Hampshire, I took, I took a different line. I just, I was, <laughs> I ended up going a lot faster than I expected. And then I realized I'm going to hit that, that, you know, that ditch right next to the curbs. It's, it's in a couple of spots in New Hampshire. So I'm going to tell everybody that. not like hit. 11, right. 12. Area? Right. Yeah. Like- so I said, Nope. So I bailed completely into the grass to not hit that ditch. I've yeah. never been so scared of Chrissy. Yeah. So anyway, that's this time at Pitt. I, I, it, I shouldn't have done either one of those things. I am convinced there was oil on the track for the, the spit. That wasn't a spin. It was, I got halfway around, but gathered it up and it was okay. Cause it never happened again. Never happened before in all the laps at that track only this once, but still that I, I felt terrible. Mm-hmm. It was bad. Who was the judge that got you for that one? Who, who Chrissy. Did <laughs> Eric's like here. He's like, I don't, I'm not even going to say anything. And it's, yep. it's, it is funny. Cause I've judged races, but that's the, that's the, there, there are teams that I'm not handling this. It's just, you know, out here on the West coast, it's zoom, zoom, kaboom, you know, Nope. I'm going to let them yell at their own people. Cause it's way worse than what we're going to do. Yep. Shame. 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 Yep, Shame. Pretty much. Yeah, I get it. Uh, Chris, do you know, was there something that caused it? Because Chrissy and I both talked about like our personal issues that got in the way of the driving. Do you uh, just the, the, just the, the moons aligned and you had two bad luck moments or do you think you were uh, out of your head? I think I was out of my head the second one. I was frustrated in a pack of cars and more concerned with where I was in that pack of cars than watching the flag stations as much. Mm, if okay. I had been looking eyes up, I think I would have caught it better. I was in a pack that had to settle out to get to single file. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I get it. I should have been eyes up a little bit more to get ahead of that problem instead of just being frustrated by the pack I was in. That happens. I, I'll, I'll find myself getting frustrated in a pack and then just remind myself, this is, this is the flow, man. Go, go mm-hmm. with the Zen thing. Now, the, the frustrated in a pack is a very real thing, especially, and my little mantra is always, you know, cause it's, it's usually like a very slow car overtaking a slightly less slow car or, you know, vice versa. And, you know, you've got the, 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 the first, second and third car all over your bumper right now. And you've got to get around this thing. And it's just, I verbalize, they paid their money, man. They paid their yeah. money. Let it, them was, race. it was just a lot easier when I had a car that could pass anything that anything in the whole field by stepping on the gas <laughs> and you do get spoiled. You totally do. And now with the mod, like I got to work at it with the mod, say like, it'll go, but it's going to take a couple of corners to get the speed up to do the thing. Or I got to outbreak somebody, which you can outbreak almost anything, but still I got to be in a spot to do that safely where they actually see me, where it's going to be a safe pass that way. And it just, I got and, I and guess clear got, your mirrors and everything. Yeah. You know, Cause you don't want to hold you anybody else. Do everything up. Exactly. Right. In a, and it, in a, right. And I just got so spoiled by having one of the fastest cars on track to pass anything that it's, it, that's why I think I was frustrated that time and not having my eyes up as much as I should have. Hmm. Yep. There you go. That's advice everyone can use. Yeah. I like that. All right. Mental. All right. Mental. Turn. You're up. I, uh, so oh, I got to scroll back up for this one. It's um, your story. You yeah. Read. Yeah. Uh, Chris and Chrissy, you guys were there for this. We, we did the NCA one. It wasn't the first race at NCA, but it was one of the first lemons races at national Corvette museum and Hobbs brought the BMW. And we actually had a, I felt like it was a pretty good theme. We had, uh, dug up an obscure Phil reference and, uh, you know, some, some sci-fi stuff. And I was towards the end of a very, frustrating racing period where I didn't finish a race for almost two years, every car, everything I kept getting into kept breaking and cars that didn't break would break. And I just had this huge black cloud. And this was the infamous Iceman Chris incident where wheel fell off. (laughs) I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a stop. And, and on this, and I just was so moody after that. And you two were needling me about that one pretty hard. And finally it was like a, 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 a fuse popped in my brain because we were having to load the car onto the trailer, but we couldn't do it because the wheel had 
fallen off. And I think, you know, I had to use the RV to pull it sideways onto the trailer while it was hooked to the truck. And I, I got to actually use the phrase, hold my beer. I'll go handle this. And then I just started giggling in the RV because I got to do this. And it was just one of those. And you would, you both had said it a hundred times over the weekend. It just wasn't getting through my thick skull. And it was just remember why we do this. And I can, I can fall into that state on occasion. I can find myself start getting just overly competitive or I get really mad or I get really frustrated. And I, I, I will hear your voices of, you know, it's, it's friendly. It's, it's, you know, racing with friends kind of a deal. And so I just, I'll, I'll force my brain back into that state of seriously, how, how serious are you right now? Because you're rolling up on a car that has a giant and, you know, aardvark bolted to its roof. Are you, are you I'd like really to see the aardvark theme more aardvark themes? Everybody. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> right. Right. It's a, you know, it, 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 but you just, you just have to kind of, and even at like the, 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 you know, the champ car AEW or I'm sorry, AEW, AR, WRL, you know, there's hardcore racing machinery out there. Uh, you'll still see something just so absurd. Uh, when I did the 25 hours of Thunderhill, uh, we, it was pouring down rain and there's a, I've run against them since then, but it's, it's a team called team Funduro and they have this speedster looking endurance car and it was pouring down rain and I rolled up on them like, Oh, those poor guys. And it's just find the funny thing or the, the thing that makes you smile on the track and put your brain back into that state. You know, you didn't hop on a plane, fly across the country, throw on, you know, a quilt in the baking sun, strap into a noisy race car to be a world champion. Not, not, not if you're listening to this podcast, not on that. And even if you are a competitive champion, if you're doing one of these amateur races, you need to remember why you're there. And if you're not there to have fun, you need to go find another series. And, and so I, I, I have, I recognize my, my personality tendencies and just, you know, force myself back into the, no, oh, Jesus, this is ridiculous and start laughing about it in the car. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Chrissy and I have definitely talked about the pressures of trying to win. <laughs> which which is why chris doesn't have one of the fastest cars you market oh man this sucked let's go back to b class uh, uh. oh well, well, that's no. why we're he's just, building that that's in the garage again. <laughs> and so that's... we want to win but yes there there was a there was a loss of fun <clears throat> yeah that happened for years for, for well i mean it, it didn't help that we took us years to do the win sure but that's why i mean like it was a loss of fun for years because there was so much pressure yeah how many winning. how many how many turbo engines did you build Chris that oh. year? Yeah. And I remember helping you with one of them. And, and I mean, this was tedium, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. bolt check measurements, unbolt, replace part check. check how much Dremel, unbolt. how much Dremel how many cylinder heads through? did I port? Mm -hmm. how, yeah. 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 So Four. many. And then the frustration after um, messing something up or what is going and then you're know, looking at what, all the work that you did so yeah there mm -hmm. was a, there were many years that that's why that, we went to a stock motor that makes right? more power yeah yeah yeah. yeah it, it blows more, up it, we go get another one it was work but it was different work yeah. but it was i i think our expectations are 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 part of this you know if if mental was me, mental it was arriving and driving with with a lot of people a lot of different people and probably they had different expectations um, including us. I mean, we, we don't always have the same expectation every weekend. So, um, you know, if, if the expectation in a fast car is to compete, to win and you're close, it's depressing. If you're bringing a piece of junk or a Citroen or a Rolls Royce, you expect it to break. So I don't, or I think you get less frustrated fixing um, how many years were you frustrated about why a Citroen would not work? All of there, these years. All the years. <laughs> so like, one and a half. Uh, yeah. up to, but so the, the Mazda is the happy medium. It's, it's, absolutely. Just like it's not going to win anything. So you're not yeah, really yeah. trying. And it's just a plucky, fun, little, fairly reliable and car. You and can just, really okay. surprise people with it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So already have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. I guess that's back to me, right? Sure. Um, this is a not so funny one, and this is one that that 
uh, haunts my nightmares, maybe, I will say. Uh, it was when we were trying to win in the Civic, and I was dutifully doing my shift and working hard and making all my corners and, you know, trying to stay in my flow state. And all of a sudden, something happened down in my crotchal area. All of my stories have to do with, like, my lap. It's not really fun. But uh, all of a sudden, my belts got loose. And I remember, kind of like, like, oh, hey, something's wrong there. You know, did did the did the seat undo? Did what happened? And like reaching down and realizing that one of the lap belts popped out of the buckle. We use five point racing harnesses or six point racing harnesses, depending on you know five go into the buckle, but never mind. Um, but one hip basically had come undone from the buckle, and it was like, what the hell is going on? And, you know, for momentarily took me out of the racing and I like, you know, had to like grope with my hand and find the belts and remate them, which is not an easy process while you're still trying to drive and make laps, you know, and then like suck in your gut a lot to try and give it some room so you can clip it in because clipping in with one hand is not very easy. Get it to click in. And then like six laps later, it pops out again. And, like literally sitting there going, I'm trying to win this race, but I'm not trying to die. I'm trying to win this race, but I'm not trying to die. Uh, and I think I got it clicked in the second time and it ended up lasting the rest of the shift. But, you know, like I got back and I reported like, there's something wrong with the belts. There's something wrong with the belts. I'm pretty sure we sent them back to get recertified and it has never happened again. And I don't know to this day whether... There was something wrong with the buckle. There was something worn. There was something dirty, or it was just like, you know, like some of my racing suit was getting caught in there. But that not feeling safe in the car immediately ruined any chance I had of taking any chances or doing anything that looked like racing driving. And I, like I said, it keeps me up at night. Like, oh my God, what if I'm there and something is, and, and you're buckled in 90% of the way, so you can't use your hands, you can't reach, you can't readjust your body. Uh, but you yeah. manage to text every once in a while on the iPad. You I do your not text on the <laughs> iPad. I lick my glove and I unlock it to turn it just back kidding, on. Just um, no, but uh, that was uh, probably the only time I've ever been afraid in a race car. I have had moments where I went, oh, oh, I almost screwed that up. Oh, I totally screwed that up. You mean you oh. don't go? Because <laughs> sometimes I do that. <laughs> or, ooh, 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 oh, oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. You know, like the adrenaline comes and goes. But that was the only time where I was like, this, this messed up. I'm in trouble. I don't. I might have to come in the pits, and fix this. And it was no fun and like i said it, it it totally ruined my race um even though it was only you know probably three or four laps that it happened i uh, yeah it was a problem but once you don't trust the equipment you don't trust the equipment a exactly mm, we had a good exactly. conversation about that and, and no lie i've rarely run anything that we haven't built you know, it, and I when you did, you had a great time. Like the TR, which is equals death. I like the TR, <laughs> yeah. but TR and the and Bert and all of those other things. I never doubted the cage. I never thought I was going to. I thought I was going to crash the TR because <laughs> the TR was insane. Right. For those I'm of you like... who might not know, it is a TR seven with a Buick thirty eight hundred supercharged, and the chassis was at least two different TR7s welded together. All of on three different, on three would, different yeah. occasions by the drunken grab, people. The wheel it walked crabbed. down. It, yeah, it was terrible. No, yeah, none of the wheels pointed the same direction, including no. that the back was a live axle. They still didn't yeah. point the same direction. No. And, and, and they somehow managed to reduce visibility. They, they yeah. managed to find yeah. a way to make a TR7. It was so low, less. you couldn't yeah. see out of it. Yeah, but all, man, all of these thing things. Was awesome. Totally fine. It sounded good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Like oh, I said, sure. I've been at that moment where I'm like, ooh, 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 I might not say get this turn done. I might hit that. But I never thought the car was going to I was going to be injured in a crash. And and I, that was terrible. My time in the TR in the Porg, right? I was 
absolutely certain. I I thought, oh. yeah, it's been a while since I've seen the inside of an ambulance. This will be fun. <laughs> Uh, I just came up with two things on the tail of Jeff's stories. Go ahead, of two go ahead, other go two other civic issues that we had that are actually your fault. Um, so, <laughs> yes, one of them uh, was the time we were trying to win, and you um, ran out of gas because I told you to keep going oh, around, yes. oh, and then terrible. you uh, didn't turn the car off and sat in the paddock oh, and yeah. then burnt the fuel pump up. Totally so we're talking fault. right? No, we're we're talking about things that that were bad times on track that made us lose and uh we didn't tell you to turn the pump off but this is for all of all y'all out there that are you think you're running out of gas make sure you turn the car off or turn the fuel pump or however you do it it was a lessons learned i don't i would like to think that if this ever happens to me i will remember and i will not be that guy you were that guy i was that guy but it's funny i didn't even think of that as a bad time on the track uh, okay <laughs> Because my That's shift fine. was great until I ran sure. out of gas. Sure, but I'm I'm thinking of things of these these didn't end well. Go ahead, mental. You reminded me of another incident when uh, we lost the fuel injector Sunday morning at Thompson, and we were doing really really well, and we just gotten the car sorted that stopped eating axles, and you just literally green flag goes out. I downshift, check engine light, no power. I bring it back in, and. It, it was the thing that never happened and it didn't bother me. It really didn't. I, I, I was, you know, hopefully am I happy of, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here racing with my friends, but I looked at Chris and I felt like I had accidentally just kicked your dog. You were just, you're like, no, this was supposed to be the engine that works. This is supposed to be the simple solution. And it was a fuel injector, which, you know, Honda fuel injectors never go bad until the one goes bad. And it was just, we were, I think we, we started in third that Sunday. Cause yeah, I remember I so. being behind Patless Matt and Betty yeah. and was actually really looking forward to what was going to be a great shift. And I just, and I, and I was, I, I was kind of chuckling. I'm like, oh, well, you know, it happens. And you just look so deflated. And I felt like I had done something wrong. I, I know I had struggled quite a bit getting that car running the first time, if you recall, to the point of having to miss the first race. And, and that was, that was tough. So, yeah, but you know, since then that engine's been great. Is, so, yeah. yeah. I see. It's funny. Cause I remember when that happened and I remember being like, okay, this is part of the normal process. Like there is, mm -hmm. there is a process of making a car work when you do stuff like this. And this you was know? after taking the wire in the tire and the two minute shit tire change and oh, see, bam, back up out there, back, after. back and in, back into threat position. Boom. Three pedal mafia. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. I have, oh, a, this I, was tough. Oh, God. I still have another Thompson story. Jeff's fucking problem. Thompson, man. Damn right. it. Right. Well, that's our that's our go-to. That's been our 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 gem, right? Our 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 time we're gonna go for the win. And um, so Jeff is driving and looking out the hood and says, There's wires coming out of the hood. Stay out. Chris says, stay out. Totally. Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> just to so you know, there's there is uh, mesh over this hole in the hood. So nothing, but there's wires through. coming out of the hood. Stay I said, out. I said they're not our wires you just drove through debris they're not ours do not pit i'm coming in <laughs> <laughs> do not pit i'm coming in comes in chris jumps over the wall pulls him out drive away i was really so, tempted to throw them at him but you should, oh no he later. wore them on his head later well, that was later <laughs> than that yes later but, in the night. yes so another <laughs> lesson learned Occasionally, if you have, first of all, have radios. Second of all, hopefully you can find somebody that's going to be listening to a radio. Not as sure everybody does that. We're pretty good about it. When somebody's on the other side of the radio and they're actually giving you the answer, then you just do that. Okay. But if you don't trust the machine, you don't. And he didn't want. He didn't want to be the guy that broke the car after yeah, being the guy that broke the car. We matter. also were competing for nothing at that point. We were not in any kind I of league. I think that was the start of Saturday. It was a start of a race yeah, because either way we were I, doing okay. We were, yeah, no we reason, were not. There was no we were reason not to come one, in. two or three. It was yeah. more of yeah. just don't like if somebody tells you don't do something, 
just don't do it because you say so. Okay. <laughs> Especially when it's the car owner and the guy who knows stuff. It was funny. It was funny. And yeah, we you, cute. you owned it by taping it to your head. Sure, later. <laughs> right. This isn't even from our car. <laughs> no, you don't know where it came from because Jeff, right. Okay. Yeah, so um, my, these are my two stories that had lessons learned and hopefully everybody can listen to it. But uh, my third thing, and then I'll be done uh, is the civic overall and it letting us down. It's slow demise of this car is awesome. This car is struggling a little. It's doing weird things. I can't figure out what what's going on. So I think that uh, going from epic and on fire and awesome and and just being trustworthy to the de- the to its demise and not even thinking about the the wheel hit. It's just the not breaking straight. The chassis and was the going, chassis yeah. just going is one of those things where I think that is just an un- unfortunate feeling I have about how the civic went down. That's why we have a new one. Sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm done. I, I, I don't believe I'd forgotten about the wheel hit. I can't believe I forgot about the wheel hit. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't, I, I guess I'm going to bring, if I'm going to bring it up, you know, no, and I just happens, honestly, but. I think the reason I forgot about the wheel hit was because those guys made us that model and they felt so bad. And that model's model great. Was, it's on the mantle here. It is. Love and, it. And, and the detail that they put into it because we'd missed the side skirt and they got the yeah. side skirt. Uh, uh. Yeah. So I, I actually, that whole memory became a happy memory for me because of that model. Very. It cool. needed to happen. It just that accelerated it slightly. It did. Okay. Yeah. Fine. All right. I've got one. This is when we were out at Button Willow recently. And I was out in the 944 early on. It was hot. It was no airflow. The air was not clean. And that 944 has no airflow through it. My cool shirt wasn't working. And I was getting, uh, I overheated. I absolutely overheated. And I was trying to fight it off. Like I'm going down the straight and putting my hand out the window to try to like put air in myself. Like I'm trying to loosen my zipper, my fire suit down just to cool off. I was definitely overheating. I was trying to fight it. I was trying to fight it. I was trying to fight it. And then I made a mistake. Like I slipped up in a corner, but I didn't go off. I didn't do anything wrong, but I said, I'm losing it. I've, I've got to stop. And I was trying to last out my shift, but I just, it was hot, no airflow. I couldn't do it. So came in. And we were, weren't trying to win anything in that car in that weekend. So like, whatever, it's not, it's not worth risking balling up somebody else's car for nothing. So came in, had some water, cooled down, put someone else in. And it was fine later on. Once we got, you know, we got the cool shirt working, I think, and got the airflow going and that, that worked much better. But that first shift, I, I almost lost it because I was just too hot. Like when I got out of the car, I looked bad. I felt bad. It was, it was yeah, bad. Yeah, you were like a color that you don't usually turn. Yeah. Mm. I didn't like, know that. I didn't ever like that this story. This color. I, 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 yeah, I remember that weekend too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, what happened to Chris? You know, and it, it, well, he came in. I started giving him crap. Like, what are you doing here? Why are you? And he's just like dead. Oh, yeah, all, green. Yeah. all right. Well, the like, the oh, lesson oh, learned, oh. Yeah, lesson learned there is if you're starting to feel bad, it's probably not going to get better. <laughs> and by the time, by the time right. you have felt it, it's probably already too late because your, your adrenaline has been hiding it for a while. So if you're, if you're really feeling bad, bring it in. Don't, don't risk it. Yeah. You're speaking right to DJ 914. It's true. Yep. Eat us. Yep. Cause also no one wants to clean your puke out of the car. <laughs> no. And you or don't Bruce. want to, I mean, Bruce just pukes and then keeps going. Yeah. You, he you know, so... a little, he needs a little trough, like one of those bi- bibs uh, that the kids I, have with the I little trough. I completely trough. agree. Yeah. With the yeah. little flappy uh, it's thing. exactly yeah. what yeah. I think. I think that'd be yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have never, I, I have never gotten to the point where I thought I would puke, but I've gotten the moment of <sighs> breathe recenter breathe recenter i think and there's there's i've at been least one really time really hot but i've never like i've never thought that it was bothering me but it, i bet now i would be more in tune to it mm-hmm. i always feel it after aer and jmp didn't you fall down that weekend i don't think so fall down 
That's yes. always in his New Year's resolution. Don't fall down. I meant like <laughs> slide down the wall appropriately. Oh, there is a time. Oh, well. No, hydro- no. That was that was in the TR seven at New Hampshire. Oh yeah, yeah. when you got yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. Like, but that hit me after. Like I was fine. I felt fine in the car. But Chris is right. It was probably the adrenaline that was hiding it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's not often. I'm just saying. Like. Yeah, but- and it's between heat, hydration, all those things go together. But the point is, if you're feeling bad, stop. Yeah. Unless you're winning, then just keep going. <laughs> You're winning. Get on the radio and get a new, get a fresh, fresh driver in there because you're not going to win if you wad the car up. No, yeah. I agree, but I, I know uh, the Tom's because we keep coming back to Thompson. I've done the ones when I've done 345 and it's 97 degrees outside. I know I came in at, at least once and fell down because it was that hot, even with cool, no matter what, just because everything and that car and the, the Honda used to be so hot inside. It was so, a sensory assault in every yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but it was also just a fire oven anyway. Yeah. Yeah. The Honda was nothing compared to the TR. Sure. <laughs> the TR <laughs> was was insane. Still is. Yeah. I mean, the car still exists. We just don't run it anymore. Yeah. And the Wartburg was the original somewhere. convection oven. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I, I can't even compare with the Wartburg. You were so busy in the Wartburg. You were so busy questioning everything. You know, it's like, is it actually steering right now? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's cool. Had, had right. that dual <laughs> axis steering that would come in and out. <laughs> Doss. I remember, I remember Doss. sliding the rear end going, you're going to grip, right? You're going to grip. Oh, it gripped. Good, good, good. We're good. Well, the <laughs> wheels on the back of that car were like so wide. That's Huge. why. That's why uh, I, I said we had to put those giant wheels on the back to catch it. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, Who's next? Mental. I think it's your turn. Uh, so the the only time I actually ever drove the ombre, uh, I was out of the country when the boat was retired, and then the ombre came about, and uh, it was at New Jersey, and I drove the ombre. And it's not anything that I did bad, but I not think I. You know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to polish this turd but basically i was convinced i was better than the ombre and i got into the ombre and i i drove it but i was being a dick and it's the i i just came away feeling really terrible for just how like i you were I, overdriving or just not being courteous on this on no the, i i, I, the I, the I, was, I was fine on the track is how i was to you guys you're just bougie about this pickup truck. Bougie, bougie oh, about the bougie. Okay. About, that is, that's, uh, it's actually still polishing the truck. I was just being a dick. And um, I think uh, part of it is I love the boat. I always just love the boat. The ombre, well, we the, ombre the ombre wasn't the, it, mechanically it was the boat, but it wasn't the boat. And then I was just, okay. yeah, I was feeling like a, feeling like an asshole and, and uh, just, just wasn't being a good teammate and wasn't, being a part, you know, was not there to make things better, which is try to, I try to have that as one of my mantras and hated the way I felt when I left. Hated the way I felt. I feel like about a week after that. So yeah, it was just a, just a, a, a failure to recognize the blessings in the team that I had and the opportunity. I was on a racetrack in a race car. This, uh, the, the last time we were just down at CMP, I was, I was the judge down there and Kevin Madsen who races Lamborghini super trofeo and he coaches all over the world and he drives in South America and he does like testing. He was part of the development team for the Cadillac CTS black wink. Uh, as he landed in Atlanta, invested a bunch of money to travel from California and landed in Atlanta, got a text from the lemons team. Hey, the engine let go. We're putting in the spare. As he's driving to CMP, turns out the spare motor is seized. We're not going to make it. And so he has invested time and money. And he is, this is how he pays his rent, is racing and developing cars. And so he still just comes down to the track and, you know, what the heck with it. And uh, Tim Bagnall, who we'll talk about in a uh, Lemons World video, because the guy's incredible, had been watching YouTube videos for years and decided the heck with this. I'm getting involved in Lemons. And he bought the old Duff Beer Volvo 850. The, just the, you, the perennial class C automatic Volvo. And, you know, this, this is a human being that has affected the performance automotive landscape. He is in an automatic Volvo in Camden, South Carolina, laughing his ass off, 
having fun, being a good teammate. And if you can go to those extremes and still just get out of it with, Oh man, this is so much fun. Then you're doing it right. And the, the only time I ever drove the ombre didn't do it right. Should have been a better teammate. Still bothers me. I think we the ombre you. continues to go on with new exactly. people and new yes, teams. It does. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell an ombre story too. When I felt like the dick on the track, please. And it's when we didn't own it. And we had sold it to Bill, and I was guest driving it because I think we had a broken car. And they, I was supposed to be the expert on the car because I was the mechanic for it, you know, while it was on the track, while Chris wrenches on the Civic. And we had a fuel leak, and I let it leak twice, and I got us banned. And I got the, like, literally Saturday, two hours into the race, that car was parked for the entire race because I didn't do it right. And I, oh, we I just forgot sold about it. that one. We had just so I felt like I had let the entire team down because there were people there to run that car and they drug it all the way to New Hampshire from Pennsylvania. And I like said, Oh, I'm sure it's not that leak that I created by doing that modification. Let's just put the cap on tighter and send it out again. And we must have overfilled it. And that was hubris on hubris on hubris. And it's my fault. And I still owe Bill a race for that. If it helps, your tale of woe has saved many a team. Because I, 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 I it's always, guys, you got a fuel leak? You're going to go over there and you're going to try and replace the cap. It's never the cap. It's never the cap. It was, <laughs> they said that to me too. That was, it's that's not a new the, line. It's never the cap. There was a, a Camaro at Sonoma two years ago. Uh, they brought it from the East coast out there and they, they just got this thing fast tech like Saturday afternoon. And they, then they get bumped for a uh, bump for a uh, fuel leak and gave them the entire story of it's never the cap. And so they, kind of like looked at each other, listened to it, went over there and started pulling all the vacuum lines and literally just blowing on the vacuum lines. And they, one of them and nothing came out. So then they put a compressor on it and they blew seven years of pine needles and pine tar out of it. And they're like, huh, it's never the the cap. (laughs) And they got to finish their weekend. So yeah, never the cap. Uh, Chrissy, do you have another story? It looks like you used your notes, but I just wanted to offer before. I don't know. Okay. I think then it's Chris's turn. You got one more? I got one more. The Saturday at Thompson when the weekend we won, the Saturday afternoon shift when I was getting blocked by the 350Z all day was so, so frustrating. Like just so frustrating. The car was running well. We were going fast. Everything was, we, we were not making any mistakes. But just having something like that, having someone actively all day, all short two hours, basically, purposely get in your way was just brutally frustrating. And you're trying to do everything you can to do it right and stay clean, but they don't really care about being clean. So they're the ones, you know, they're going to pull the Max Verstappen moves of, I'm going to dive into this corner. You have to not hit me for and two a, hours and other people around the track and yeah. when you did get by them they just slowed down and waited for you to catch up mm-hmm. yeah yep. for two hours three hours mm-hmm. it was so frustrating mm-hmm. and that made that win so much sweeter but, <laughs> but, <laughs> i just came across our ugly cry or my ugly cry yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you won't let that, me put that on yeah. a t-shirt but no. that shift was what? just that shift was so brutal for that reason. When it's like you're doing everything possible, and because someone else is being a jerk, like you know, that's ruining your day. It's funny. I had, I had the. It was earlier in the day. I had the kind of the exact opposite reaction to that. Well, you know? sat- Sunday you had a great time in the, in the morning shift with them, but. It was Saturday and at the end of the day, because I was leading and they were in second and that that's the kind that I ran out and caused it to run out of fuel, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Oh, you're talking about Saturday. You're not talking about Sunday. No, I'm talking about Saturday. Okay. Saturday. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because Sunday was when we all, when the entire paddock knew that they were blocking you. Yeah. So this was and- Saturday when it was at, when it was bad. 
and mm-hmm. but it was just the whole shift and it's just so brutal to have that kind of that kind of thing happening there's nothing you can do about it like if because yeah. otherwise like if if we didn't care as much <clears throat> sure you rub in a little bit just like cut it out it, but, we're lucky we didn't yeah. have the ombre that weekend because i would have pushed him the hell off the track we wouldn't have you would have well, uh, made their you would have made their life a little difficult though. that was I the know. joy of that weekend is we all reached that frustration point <clears throat> at a different time where yeah. we would say something that we knew was beneath us as as just racers and the other three would go no we're not and then okay yeah no we're not and then you know a couple hours later another one of us ah, just, Who's got a spare car? I'm gonna go out there. No, no, we're okay. No, we no we're not. But I would have blocked for you. I would have got in front of you and blocked. But yeah, I, but that's I, why. I, that's why. And, and we're just gonna say this really quickly, and then we'll go back to it. That's why this was so dirty pool, and so not what because doing multi car strategies and blocking for the car that's winning just causes other people to do the same thing, and that is a slippery slope. And that's why mm-hmm. you don't well, do it anywhere. And mm-hmm. ultimately it was, it was a, it was a failing strategy because at the time the two cars that were in the lead were so far ahead, this allowed the third and fourth place cars to suddenly come up. And, you know, when you were just dealing with one competitor, now you've slowed the whole pack down and now you've got three and they're all challenging you for the win now. And it was, it was, a, it was a flawed strategy. I don't want to be that person that keeps fussing about that though. Like, four I mean, years I don't, after I don't, fact, but, I'm sure uh, we are. <laughs> I just, it was, we're talking about bad stuff. No, we're talking about bad No, no, no. That, 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 yeah. bad it, it, your point, I just, yeah, we shouldn't, you know, go, but yes, your point, it is, it's valid. It is a, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Metzl, do you have a story or can I offer a palate cleanser? <laughs> go, you, you do you, bro. I just received a text. Oh, you're never going to read it. No. Nope. Nope. Summit Racing says your package with UPS will be delivered soon. Coming to 300 your do place you, do you have the my, right my house this time it's coming to my house yeah yes, great thank you house, not not jeff's is. old house no no nope. no that was not nope. me that was not me so yes yeah. you you your my summit racing package will arrive at your door very soon for this weekend's festivities great great yeah so this is part of the go listen to our how to make work week and successful show and one part of it is get all the parts you need ahead of time so you can actually do the work this is part of that I'm I'm genuinely bummed I can't be there. I, I'm I'm going to be Class B bachelor starting Saturday. Oh, Jeff! By the way, I put a link to the the wheel that we need. I found a place that has it at very reasonable price. Oh, good. Uh, shipped. We'll I put that in that the up. RX7 notes. Car doc. wheel or steering wheel? I'm sorry, Car we're wheel. having a show here. What yeah. is, this is how... part of that? Uh, good. This, no, all right. No, it's not. Any more stories? Let's wrap this one up. Anybody the got anything? Thank you, anything Chrissy. Finish? You're welcome. People are like, I don't care to listen to about your 24 is he minutes. fucking eating? Right. <laughs> Mental. Hey, this is how you make a successful work weekend. Right. That's how the uh, sausage is made. You don't uh, bypass the show that we're on. <laughs> I didn't want to, didn't want to forget. <laughs> Mental open the show, so I'll close it with. Please. I think Mental said a great philosophical thing. Imagine that. He Clutch does that. my pearls. He's again reminded us that everybody here told a personal story, except for maybe one about blocking, which we're going to ignore. <laughs> the person who is going to ruin your track weekend or your race weekend is probably you and your brain or your body. So take care of yourself. And remember, there ain't no F1 scouts in the stands. I saw one you need once. to have a good fr- good time with your friends, whether the car is broken or you're winning. You're not at work. You're at a freaking racetrack. Have a good time. Chance are you paid a lot of money to be there too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. That, that F1 scout she saw though, he's the guy that was recruited to Moz Spin. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling we have an on the spot. We do. If we didn't have anything else. So I came up with this one. So, um, and Jeff, I think you're not going to be able to answer this one because this is okay. inspired by you. Is your your exuberance over the new electric scout it's it's the recurrence of an older car in a new now that everything all the electric cars are on skateboards essentially so you can put all kinds of bodies on them what would you like to be recreated as a modern vehicle on a modern electric skateboard car Mm. so old car that you like remade well into a new ev 
Go ahead. Can, go ahead. I know I don't I'm have an answer for myself yet, but I know I'm always the first one to answer this. And I would do it with the one that I have, except getting a title for it is going to be impossible in the state of Nevada. But a, a Porsche 914 would be an exquisite EV, especially inside the city. Wouldn't even have to have much more than 150 miles of range. Uh, low, quick, you could have, it wouldn't even need that many batteries. And it would just be little darty go-kart to drive around. You could look cool and then feel good about what you were doing while you did it. I would love to have, I'm, I still toy with the idea of an electric 914 if I didn't have 37 projects already. Yep. It's great. Should I go, Chrissy? Or do you want? Yeah, sure. I'm going to say how to CRX because CRXs are just so cool. They're fun. They're nimble. They're handling. They're economical. Like that was what it was all about. I think you could make totally a good modern EV in the spirit of a CRX. That's that keeping the handling, keeping the fun, keeping the the tossable good nature of it. I think you could do that as long as, especially if you had it in Barbados yellow Y forty nine. Oh yeah. So so I was gonna say, are you doing the one five, the uh, SI or the uh, HF? Clearly, you're going the SI route. Nice. Yeah, of well, course. No, it would be the HF because it would get such great gas mileage, right? But not no, available but in it, yellow. Uh, yeah. No, it, yeah. it'd have to be an 88 in yellow. But nice. Anyway. Good one. Chrissy? Uh, I have a tie. And you're going to think one of them is, you're going to think both is funny. Uh, a Mark I rabbit. Not a surprise at all. No. The other one is a Datsun 210. No, five. Yes. Isn't it same what's... thing? Better motor. Okay. No. Fine. It's an electric motor. <laughs> that's, it's true. that's true. <laughs> yes. Because no, everyone loves the 510. The 210 would be unique. The 210 is the right answer. Unique. Yeah. Awesome. Do you know why uh, I picked that? My dad no. used to have one. That's oh, why. all right. You learned how to shift from the right I seat. I did. I did. <laughs> yep. What okay, color? That's a great story. Blue. Uh, best friend and rust. And rust. His was lots, green. lots of rust. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. had one too. He yeah. had a five ten, with the funky hubcaps and everything. Oh. Yeah. What's your answer? Yeah, do you have one different one aside from a scout? I mean, scout was obvious, but if you had to pick a second one, anything you can think of? I I think an electric rock crawler is where it's at. So, that's what I would say. Go with the scout. Cool. Corn All right. King. Thanks for that. That's a yep. good one. And uh, with that, I'll say the question that we always ask. Any idea what we're covering next week? Nope. We'll right, figure, we'll it, figure out. it out. Uh, thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building. Because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you're watching on the YouTube or wherever we happen to be posting this, comment down there in the doodly-doo. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text mental 484-243-0455. Instagram, Twitter, everyone racer, everyone.racers. Even Reddit slash E1R. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless it's a rusty old Dotson or Scout, then just keep the rubber wheels down. <laughs> <laughs>